Hi guys, welcome to Teachers Off Duty Podcast, and I am Lauren Woolley. I don't know why I started that so weird, but oh well, we're gonna roll with it. You were eager. I, I love was. It. I just want to <laughs> jump right into it. Listen, I'm tired, y'all. Like it's it's been a long day, so I am going to hand it over to my my lovely co-host. Thank you. There you go. It's like the mid lunch, like the mid lunch sleepies or something like it that. Is. Um, I'm uh, Tal Williams or Mr. Williams pre can social medias, and we have our guest here. <gasps> Hi guys, I'm Sophia Bella. I am Sophia Bella on social media. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I have a question for you guys mm-hmm. because I always wonder this about other people who are teachers. Um, if you couldn't be a teacher, what would you be? Like, what job would you have? I feel like this is easy for me because I'm doing a transition right now. With mm-hmm. um, I'm uh, finishing up my clinical um, social work degree, uh, so I'll be a th- therapist I want to I want to be a therapist um and I, it was actually teaching that made me want to do that mm-hmm. um but if I like I feel like that's cheating because it's like so if I could be anything anything you know like just on, on a whim um I think I would want to be a comedy writer specifically you'd be so good at I don't, that I'd want to be like in maybe like like sometimes SNL? in but like yeah like yeah. maybe like every once in a while but I would love to just write comedy you can write I comedy for me that. anytime. You're so funny. I I'm hilarious. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're just so funny. So funny. Okay, what about you? What would you do? So with that, I would say like the way I see it is like if I could be anything, like someone's like whatever you want, you got it. I'd be an actress. <gasps> yes, I, I would. That. I would 100% be an actress. I I just I've always wanted to be on TV. And now I am. Would you do TV or would you do a movie? <laughs> um, I would be in movies. I actually like, I really like talking. Yeah. Obviously. So I would I would totally like start off like as a host of something and then make my way into movies. Like something yeah. in the production. I kind of love that. Like, you'd be like Oprah. Oprah started out in TV and then went into movies. Yeah, like a cameo. Like, yeah. you know, like Bad Bunny. But like if I was like... <laughs> I would be in a movie with Bad Bunny. There you go. You could be Bad Bunny's love interest. Mrs. Bad Bunny. Mm, I would love to be Mrs. Bad Bunny. <laughs> yeah. I am Mrs. Bad Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, but if I obviously like that's like in a in a in a fantasy world. Well, maybe not. I don't know. But hey, never never say never never school never. for something that yeah. could be actually you know easier to attain. I'd be a lawyer. <laughs> okay, Al Woods. I love that. Yeah, I would be a lawyer. Um, I became a teacher because law school was expensive and took a long time. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard. Like, Isn't I'm that a- funny? Because I also almost went to law school. I wow. would love it. I just love to like argue. Yeah. So yeah. I would be a lawyer. Professional arguer. I would love I to be would, professional arguer. I'm obsessed with like true crime and stuff. So I probably would do something with like either like being like a, I don't know, what's, what's it called? Like a, some kind of biologist that does like testing on like- Oh yeah, um, forensic biology or yes. forensic mm, chemistry. Forensic. Yeah, like, for some kind I of forensic that. testing thing or like, I don't know. I want to say a detective, but like I don't want to be a cop. Yeah. Like that, you know, if they were separated, if I didn't have to be a cop to be able to become a detective. You, They're not. It, well, at least in, in you my- You have to be a cop to be before yeah, you, you have to be, be promoted a cop before to you can become a detective. Y'all. It's a promotion. Oh you thought you could just gosh. like go to school and be a detective? You can't, like join the FBI? I'm calling. I'm calling. Maybe I'm, you I'm could calling. be like, I don't know. Can you be like a private investigator? Yeah, you can totally right? do that. Okay. I have but no I want to be like, yeah. I want to be like the doing the crimes. Oh my you God. Just do like the crimes? crimes? No. Okay. <laughs> I want to be like working on the crimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. After they're done. <laughs> teachers off duty is now teacher, the, the teacher criminals. <laughs> <laughs> now we know what they do when they're off duty. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, that's so funny. We can't have those jobs, obviously, <laughs> currently in our lives. So we might as well look at some of the good things that we do love about our current jobs, yeah. which are being teachers. And something that is not talked about enough are the good parts of being a teacher. 100%. I know a lot of the times there there are things we complain about and rightfully, rightfully so. so yeah. <laughs> but there are there are benefits to being a teacher and yeah. there are definitely pros and things that make it worthwhile. So I think that this is a great opportunity yeah. to kind of like just share out some of our favorite things about being a teacher. You said I want I want you to repeat cuz we loved it. What you said about t- teacher t- versus yes because so something that like me and all the teachers at my well not all the teachers so i don't want to speak for everyone but like me and like my uh team last year we would always say that we love teaching but we don't like being a teacher i love that and like i think that teachers everywhere can completely understand yes. where yeah. i'm going with that yeah. yeah because there's a completely different side of teaching and then being a, a teacher. teacher like your responsibilities and what 
admin asks of yes. you and what you know the way people see you right. that is what is hard the autonomy but, you lose as a person yeah, as yes. a, being a teacher but yes. when you're teaching when you're in right. front and you're in the classroom with the so kids fun. and you're doing all these things that is the beautiful that is yes. the beauty of teaching I love that. Uh, there, there are so many times that I was talking and it was hard to explain. I, I wanted it to, to word it in the way that you did, but it's like I am a teacher in, in the sense that that's my profession, but as a human, I am not a teacher. That's not my yeah, identity. Exactly. And I think that's important to know because it's like, I think a lot of people carry that with them. You can you can be a lifelong teacher, right? Or, or maybe like teaching is your identity. Maybe that Maybe you love that about that, but it's not... Mm -hmm. me there's so much more to me it's what i do as a job and i'm passionate yeah. about that job and exactly. i love that job but i don't identify as a teacher I, yeah like, there's so much right. more to me than that like <laughs> yeah i mean okay like up until honestly and that's what like sparked it you said that like literally five minutes ago and we were like <laughs> we're, oh my god like i've never even thought to, to make that distinction that but yeah like i i love that i have a whole separate side of myself that is not just right. i eat sleep and teach and that's right. it right and, mm -hmm. and like sometimes you just get thrown into this box where you're like, you teach and that's all you do and you can't do anything else. Right. You can't be a person. You can't have your own thoughts or ideas or personality or your likes or interests because you're a teacher. And it and weighs. Mm -hmm. It weighs it on weighs you. It weighs on you. Yes. So it's like, it, it's not only does it weigh them, but then it's like, then I think that's why it's hard for teachers to talk about the things that they enjoy. Because it's like, if you talk about the things that you enjoy, then people are going to be like, okay, so then you should love doing it. And it's just like, exactly. you know, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's still a lot of, a lot of stuff we have to work on. Mm -hmm. So it's almost scary sometimes to tiptoe into the good yeah. and what you enjoy because you want them to be like, but remember, please, <laughs> that our inf the infrastructure, whatever it's called, of education mm -hmm. is crumbling. And like, mm. But there are things that we enjoy that, that I love. Yeah, you like know? I started teaching. Well, I've been like in the classroom since I was 19. Like right when I graduated, oh that's when I became a pre-K teacher. Yeah. And so I was teaching preschool while I was in college. Mm -hmm. And that was like the best time ever because I... I kind of, when, when I taught pre-K, it was more of like I taught these uh, people signed up to yeah. be in my class. Yeah. And I taught whatever I wanted. Yeah. I didn't have anyone yeah. telling me how to teach or yeah. what to teach or what to do. And that was just so much fun because I got to do my passion. Yeah. And I was with the kids. And then it wasn't until I was 22 when I graduated and I got my teaching license and I was in the classroom as a licensed teacher where it completely changed. And I feel like, I had to grow up because yeah. then I was now a teacher yeah. and I was, yeah. you can't do this. You can't do that. Just and that was the, now I'm a teacher. I'm not teaching. Yes. Mm -hmm. I talk about that a lot. Like my, like year one, Lauren Woolley is not at all related <laughs> to year seven, Lauren right. Woolley. Yep. And like, I like in college, they teach you a lot about professionalism and about mm -hmm. how like you should dress when you go to work yeah. and what you can and can't do and what you can't have online and things like that. And like I wholeheartedly like took that and ran with it. And I was yeah. like, I have to wear like a dress shirt and dress pants and I have mm -hmm. to wear like a suit jacket and I have to speak to the children professionally and I can't pretend like I'm 22, even though I am 22. I have right. to pretend like I'm 46. Right. And mm -hmm. I'm like, it's... Like, it's so enlightening to, like, be... I'm 28 years old now, and it's so nice to, like, have fun picking my outfits for school again. Yeah. And to, like, mm -hmm. enjoy being 26. Because, like, I've talked to Jordan about this a lot, and I'm like, Jordan, why did you let me dress like a 37-year-old <laughs> mom for, like, most of my 20s? Like, why did you allow me to do that? And he's like... I don't know, man. Like, that's what, just what you wanted to do. And that's I was what like, you wanted to wear. But um, he's like, I'm like, do you like my style a lot more now? And he's like, yeah, because you dress your age. And he's like, you're only 28. And sometimes I forget that, like, 28 is not old. No. Right. And so, I like, it's okay for me to, not, and, you know? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I, hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I'm getting there. <laughs> Tell, um, right. you're 28, right? I'm tw I am exactly 28. I yes. So. Um, not he a, just not turned a, 28 today, actually. Yeah. yeah it's his birthday. birthday. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I, I hate that it has to be like your whole life. Like a, right. your mm -hmm. your job is your entire personality. And I, I feel like when you can recognize that, that 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 it's okay to have other you know intersectionalities when you can then sit and enjoy it, right? Like that's when it completely I, changes. I went for I I loved um, being able to. So we had I was at the Head Start program and it was a curriculum based. So like we had lesson plans to do. It was it was very. I mean it was school. It wasn't a daycare. It was school. And but the, what I loved about that is the autonomy they gave us of like here's the the standards. Find a way to 
teach that though, yeah. which is what you know all teachers get to do, really. But it was I, I felt like the the uh, magic school, like Miss Frizzle, of uh, because if we were doing you know um, learning about different animals, I'd wear like a full safari outfit. Yeah. When we were talking about you Fun. know um, space, I was wearing like a head to toe like 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 astronaut, astronaut. outfit, mm -hmm. and it took a while for me to get comfortable with that because you are told, and I was at uh, you know a lot of pre Ks and Head Start programs aren't based in a public elementary school they're based in like centers mm -hmm. where it's all pre-k well my That's mine was i, I was one yeah. pre-k classroom and then it was you know k through six so i was in a public elementary school so i felt like i had to, to in in indiana where i'm from slacks khakis polo or button up every day except for friday and friday can wear like jeans and uh, shit. yeah maybe jeans, a, yeah, day. jeans day donate a dollar and so but why do i picture you as like Ken from Toy Story 3, where he's like in his closet trying oh on the God. space suit because it was and the that. disco suit and the, like having a whole fashion show for Barbie, it right? Really, it really was. Like, I remember doing like uh, dino the dinosaur stuff and dressed like like um, Laura Dern in Jurassic Park. Like, I mean, little <laughs> things like, like, and once I did that, like, that was so much fun. Not like, not necessarily the dressing up, but like the kids' excitement over seeing their teacher get so into it. Mm -hmm. Like, when we did space, I there's like on your iPhone, you can make like an alien face, and I recorded myself as an alien and would change the voice and then all throughout the space unit the alien was trying they were trying to find where the alien was so we had mm -hmm. to learn about each planet as they were going because and he would send messages about okay i'm at this planet now and that was fun it, it, taking a whole theme and making it the entire classroom i mean listen i the Love. entire school the entire Love classroom was decked out and they yeah. had to do that each month like that's gotta be exhausting like it is but it's so much fun to see the kids there. It's like their own yeah. little like, Disney World going in there. Yeah, and like people always ask me the same thing about my classroom. Like that, and that's one of the things I love about teaching is that like you do get this giant chunk of space. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say giant because not all classrooms are giant, <laughs> yeah. but like yeah. you, get you get a your chunk own of space. space. <laughs> yeah, you get a chunk of space that you can kind of turn into your own thing. Yeah, and like some some people think I'm crazy to like do what I do in my classroom yeah. and like have like flexible seating for the kids and like. And put all the decorations up and all that stuff. And I'm like, I don't mind spending the time on it, though, because it's something I enjoy. It's not like, just their classroom. It's right, yours, it's too. It's not just yeah. their space. It's my space, too. And if that's not for you, that's OK. Yeah. Like, you don't have to be that person. But, like, that's just something that, like, is enjoyable about the job for me. I enjoy making the space feel inviting and comforting yeah. and, like, and for me, not even just for the kids. Like, right. I, I like it to feel like an extension of my home. Mm -hmm. And um, like, it just, for me, I, like environment is everything. Yeah. And like, I'm the same way about my house. Like I, like if a room is not finished, <laughs> which is currently what I'm dealing with because we just, we built a house last year. And so like, not all of our rooms are like fully decorated. There mm -hmm. are quite a few that are literally bare and have that's, no furniture. That's okay. I'm still going through that. Right. And I've lived in my house for a year now. So. <laughs> right. So I'm like, okay, well I need you know, I need to do this, 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 this. And I want it all done now because I like my surroundings yeah. to feel cozy and comfy and like just nice. And so that's like, that's my favorite thing. Like one of the favorite things about teaching is getting to decorate your room and stuff. Yeah, that's and I fun. feel that same way. Like I am all about like, I want to enjoy being at school. Yes. It's like when you go to a party, if everyone around you is not having a good time, you're, you're not, not gonna have a good time. Yeah. Right. So I feel like as long as my surroundings look good, the kids love it, right. I'm gonna love it. If yeah. they're having fun, I'm having fun. So like dress up. I love right. dressing up for every single occasion that happens at school. Right. Like we had, um, we were doing a space week and I bought a light up skirt and it had the literally oh the, all the constellations That's and cool. it, I would turn it on and I would be walking around the school with my light up skirt. I have my NASA pants. Like I love that. And the kids love it. The, and yeah. it makes me happy because I'm like, you're enjoying, I'm doing my job but I'm having fun while doing my job. And yeah. you're yeah. Do, like, you're getting, you're learning. You, you can know? be professional, but not take yourself too seriously. Yes. And kids thrive when I, mm -hmm. I, I don't get this idea, especially working um, or have had working in, in a, um, you know, title, either a title one or a place that, you know, most of the people were living in poverty, like how intimidating that might be seeing someone overdressed for work to play on the carpet with children or to yes. read a children's book or whatever, you know, whatever I was doing that day. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was always the days where I was able to relax with what I was wearing or, or, or with what I was doing in class, you know, whatever that the kids seemed to enjoy it more yeah. because I wasn't taking, I wasn't yeah. taking myself seriously. Like at the end of the day, like I got, to, when I was like full time teaching pre-K, I got to play for seven and a half hours a day. Like 
not a bad gig. You know what I mean? Like that's right. fun. Yeah. Like the playthrough learning, that's so fun. Let me also say, and like this is a point of contention with me because everyone's like, the biggest perk of being a teacher is getting summers off. Oh, no. Yes. Okay. Once the again. One month. <laughs> yeah. The one month Once we again, have. we don't have the in- like most schools don't have the entire summer off. Right. Like you're doing some professional development 100%. through throughout the school year. And like you're a lot of the times I, I was moving classrooms because yep. they made me move or something or whatever. And they tell you that in like, you know, end of June. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, by the way, end you're of June, by the way, like, yeah, you need to clean up all your stuff, pack it up. We'll move it for you. Um, So then you're also going to have to wait for us to move it and mm-hmm. then you can unpack. Right. Yep. But regardless, <laughs> I love that I have like the time to just be like, mm-hmm. there's a distinct difference between school Lauren and summer Lauren. Yeah. Absolutely. And I love that I have the time to travel to see my friends because yeah. now that like, now that I have this like teacher community on TikTok and on YouTube, I have to travel thousands of miles to see all my friends. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I'm happy to do that. And I love that we have the summer to be able to do that. Yeah. So I I think summer is obviously one of the biggest benefits yeah. of being right. a teacher. Yeah. And the thing like with that, I am I noticed that like I think you guys can say the same. When you're in the classroom, you're like in a whole different yeah. mode. Yeah. Yes. Mind. Like yeah. I it's so hard for me to like create content while like I'm actually at school that week, For you know, sure. teaching because I'm like not focused on anything. I'm fully like devoted yep. to being a teacher. And then when those summers come around, I'm like, ah, oh, I don't have like I'm out of the teacher right. mode. I can just relax comes back. and just be me. So it's really nice to have those breaks because we need right. them because we're yeah. just teacher 100 percent right. like they're that my mind is I need to worry about my lesson plans. I need to worry about grading this. I need to yeah. worry about getting this done, going to work early, leaving work late right. because I'm fully in there. Yeah. You're in there. And and I like that, like, we're hopefully, and I think this is something that you learn. You're able to switch that off, you know, and it takes a while. It took me a very long time to Mm -hmm. not the entire, well, one, up until I moved to Pennsylvania. So for six years of teaching, I never had summer off. I I got a, I had two jobs. I was a, I worked at a theater as the hair and makeup designer, and then I um, was teaching. So I just did this. Then summer stock kicked back up and we're doing like four shows or whatever. So moving here when I finally was able to differentiate and be like you are you know again you're teaching you're you know not as an identity teacher you can relax a little bit into that and really acknowledge and soak up those time that Mm -hmm. time off um but then you know I also started doing you know (laughs) year-round but um the I think one because there's many things I like yeah that's gonna be like I don't think controversial but kind of like um, I do love the parents. I do love a lot of my parents. Um, That's good. I've had more more positive experience with mm-hmm. parents than I have negative. It just feels yeah. like the negative ones have been really right. negative. Yeah. But when you get to partner with a with a with a parent that loves like part like the the, the idea of coming together for their child's education or to you know mm-hmm. when parents acknowledge like you're helping raise my child with me. Mm-hmm. There's something great about that and that relationship with them. I've had parents be like, give me a wine bottle with their child's face on it for that Christmas. So here you go. Oh or like invited to. And I think we talked about this in a, in a, in a later episode about um, getting invited to like pool parties and stuff like mm-hmm. that from the parents. It's like, the you know, don't worry, the kids won't be there. But it's like adults come over. We're going to have a pool party. And just like you I earned it. it. And it's 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 so nice to have that relationship with the parent. Yeah, I had. I remember one year, like especially with the p- kids that are kind of difficult, you know, yeah. like they just you're. You got to give them so much attention. And the parents like recognize that. I had this one student who like everything, like we had iPads in the class and I would give him an iPad and I'd be like, here, it's your turn. I don't want the iPad. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to give you the iPad then. You said you don't want it. And he's like, okay, I don't want it. I give it to another kid. I want the iPad. And I'm like, you told me no, so you can't get the iPad. So it's like constant battles, Right. right? Yeah. And I would, and mom knew. How is he today? And I'm like, you know, just being him. And I love him. I yeah. love him for him. Yeah. And she would buy me, like she would make him walk into class with bouquets of flowers. Aww. On Valentine's Day, I had like yep. a whole dozen of balloons yeah. and flowers and chocolates. And it's like, thank you for putting up with my kid. And right. I just love that when you have those parents that work with you. Because I'm like, you know, I have your kid more than you have your kid. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, we have to work together. <laughs> I'm not a parent, but I know that has to be hard for parents. And that's why I'm always like, I want to have grace with them because like for the for 
that's hard, right? Yeah. To, yeah. to give your child away. And that's why I also am like, it's, I think that's why parents are like, I want to imagine that my child's teacher is a saint and doesn't drink and sits mm-hmm. at home in a cardigan and drinks tea and pets their cat and that's it. Like that's all they do. <laughs> and watches scary movies right, and cozies up. Because <laughs> it's like, they want they want to know that their baby's being taken care of. Yeah. And that's scary. But like, it's nice when your parents are like, I can I can fully say in ten years I've, there's never been a child I didn't love in my classroom. But some of them it it feels harder to love in some days, and some days it, they're easy to love. You always choose love, but some days it's harder. And right. it's nice when a parent says like, "I see you. I see that it's a struggle some days to just like be able to like continually do their behavior plan or their their you know IEP." And thank you, like, mm-hmm. and it's that appreciation. But it's like you know what, and that makes it even easier the next time there there's something an you know, emotional outburst they have to help. Be right, like, right. Your parents get it. And we're partnering together. And I love that. I love it. I know. I've had, I've had some really good parents over the, the course of seven years. And like, it's you, like, there are just the ones that are a little bit extra special. Yes. That like, uh-huh. you just never forget about. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I had um, a couple of parents like a few years ago, one of the students, like, she loved my TikToks and she loved <laughs> my videos and would watch them all the time. And like, she would say she was my biggest fan. And at oh. the end of the year, she and her mom went and got me, like my principal came up to me in a staff meeting and was like, where do you get your eyelashes from? Just randomly. And I was like, uh, I don't know, Ulta maybe? Mm-hmm. And she's like, okay, anywhere else? I'm like, no? Okay. Didn't hear anything else. And that was that was the only question she asked me. And then uh, on the last day of school, that student's mom sent me a $50 gift card to Ulta Aww, so that I, I could buy because she knew I liked to buy makeup. So I was like, that was so sweet like and thoughtful of them to like take the time to actually like have somebody ask what I mm-hmm. wanted yeah. or what I would get, you know? So I think that was really sweet. And then um, my other favorite thing is like what students give me. Yes. Like, I was just gonna especially say. because I know all, like this might not be the same for high school. I'm sure high schoolers like have given gifts also. Mm-hmm. But when when an elementary school kid gives you it's a so gift, different. Mm-hmm. even the most like minuscule of things, it is like it. they gave you a like a brick of gold. It is. Like, it is. It, like mm-hmm. I had a student come up to me literally a week ago and hand me a rock. Mm-hmm. I said, Mrs. Woolley, I brought you this rock. I said, thank you so much. It's beautiful. Where did you get it? And they were like, the parking lot. Oh, I was like, I so love it. Awful. Thank you. And I just set it on my desk. I love it. And it's it. like, they took the time out of their day to stop and pick me up that chunk of concrete from yeah. the parking lot. Right. And I'm like, thank you, small child, for I giving me that girl, concrete. And she came in one day with a bunch of wildflowers. Like, yeah. She was like, <laughs> she was like, Miss. I brought you a bouquet of flowers. I'm like, wow, where'd you get these? She says, I just picked them right now when I was walking in. And I'm like, Aww. that is so sweet. Like the fact that she was like, these are for my teacher. And like, they're little babies. You know, we don't teach yeah. them those things. It just comes 100% from the heart. They're yeah. not taught to give gifts as a, you know, how right. to show gratitude and all I that. I had a student. It's pure. Like, it's yeah, just it's so pure. pure. <laughs> I, had, I had two students last year that like, uh, my class last year, I had like, such a wild ride with them like they were they were great and then we had our rough days also but i had two girls that made me handmade gifts like they literally um the one girl made a candle with her mom it's like one of those like tall candles and then she like knew i liked 21 pilots so she put 21 pilots on the front of the candle and like gave that to me for christmas that's so sweet and then the other girl like took her starbucks frappuccino like the little glass yeah. bottles they come mm-hmm. in and she like peeled off the label and then hand painted like mrs william fifth and like polka dots all over it and wrote me like a note mm-hmm. and stuff and like those are the things like on the worst days of your job that like you're just like nothing's going right, right. you know the airport loses your luggage you step <laughs> in poop you chuck on water <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> on those worst days like when a kid hands you yeah. like a handmade gift or something are they like the littlest things little means, things it's like makes you feel better it's the it's the like empathy that kids yeah. bring and so like i would we won't i will not cry in this episode yes, but you will. I, I won't because i don't do that <laughs> no it's okay to cry just not in this episode uh, <laughs> i so um my mom uh was my my classroom social worker but she was also the social worker of another school so she mm-hmm. had two schools that she had split her time between and um she passed away uh, in the middle of the school year, she passed away like two days going back after after what we called Christmas break in Indiana. Mm-hmm. And I remember having to 
you deal with your mom's death, but then it didn't occur to me. I had explained to my students what happened to Miss Betty. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to be terrible. Yeah. And they were like, you know, we can have the parents come in that day and, and they'll do. And I was like, I'm fine. Like, I got this. And so I went in and I don't know what happened that day, but I was able to just like even keel conversation. I made it about Miss Betty as the social worker, not Miss Betty as my mom. And yeah. I don't know if the principal, I don't know who talked to them, but they knew that Miss Betty was my mom because kids didn't grasp that. Right. at all like right. they thought my mom and I were joking we're like no this is you know how yeah. you have a mommy this is my mommy they'd be like not a thing yeah and so I remember telling the, the class that and then one of the kids stopped me and was like I'm sorry about your mom and I was like oh like this is about you guys like what do you guys need to talk about and they would they each one after one came up and gave me a hug and I remember being like destroyed by that I and would it, be bawling oh I was Aww. I was and I tried to run out to about because I used like if I do it here it's I'm never gonna no I don't know I'm so gonna sweet. come back it wasn't until so this was January I got a call from the other school that she was at. It was this elementary school I went to growing up. And they said, um, we're so sorry. We need you to, this This is hard. We, we've been trying not to contact you all year. It was May because my mom and I were born on the same day and it was oh, right wow. after her birthday. Oh. I was like, oh. and then can you come and clean out her office? Uh, I was like, okay, fine. Like I, I'll do that. And I remember walking in and being like, kids are amazing because they had still gotten her gifts when she had passed. So I walk into her office and it's just filled with gifts and cards from the parents. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how do you guys expect me to clean this up? And I like the doors open, I start sobbing because I did during the day. And I remember her kids walking by and I was like, oh, like kids naturally want to help people. And I feel like that's such a beautiful thing when you see kids yeah. do that, that they naturally want to be there and to take care of their teacher. Mm -hmm. Ugh, like, I love that. Yeah. It was, it was th that there's always like, good that comes from bad and i think that renewed a lot of my want to keep teaching because yeah. like i was burnt out mm -hmm. yeah there's nothing worse than yeah. coming back to school the day after your mom's funeral See, and, and like last year i was um last september one year from now one year this yeah. month um i was in a car accident a really bad car accident like i broke my hand tore my shoulder oh my like fractured my nose totaled yeah. my car and it was in september school had just started so i was teaching third grade brand new class <laughs> Oh my goodness. I remember I came back after a week of being home. Yeah. I was like, I need to go back to school. I cannot have these kids by themselves. They're brand yeah. new. I need to build my relationship right, with them. Right. Like I need to be there. You have to do that right off the bat. And yeah, so I got, I was in class and those kids, I mean, they're like, come, Miss Mo, come. Like, you're, you, we got you. I'm like with my cast, like walking, couldn't brush my hair. My oh. eyelashes were all out. And I, I have videos up where it was crazy hair day and I'm like, I can't get ready. And they're like, we got you. And they did my crazy hair for me. Aww. And they like took so, like I came home to, I came home, I came home <laughs> to <laughs> class with piles of yeah. notes and I had just met them. Like, well, not met them, but it was my first, yeah. you know, first month with them. And they took so much care of me. Like they were like, no, miss can't get up. What do you want me to write on the board? I got right. you in your third grade. Isn't it crazy how fast they attach to you? Yeah. It was, like, and it was just like, even when they're they a brand new us, group of kids, you know, yeah, like they're a brand, like literally I've had my students for three weeks and like already I get hugs every day when they leave and like, they like will tell me, you know, this is the best class I've ever had or I'm, I love school now, blah, blah, blah. like all those things. I love how they just like, you know, like you do can you make so it. fast. You have the opportunity in teaching and, and I think this is one of those things that it's, frustrating with the climate of everything going on right now that that you know there are some states and we talk again i keep saying we talk about it in this up and this up but like that people just come off the streets and teach now and yeah. and yeah. it's like where did you can you tell me where you learned to make a safe space for these kids um because that is that is something that kids don't always have and that's not something that there's something you learn you learn mm -hmm. the logistics of it but something that like um like in school you learn how to, how to do this this and this and i worry that the people were just picking up and it could be the same i guess with teachers that are licensed maybe they don't know how but like you understand the importance yeah. of having yep. that safe space and and how teaching cannot happen unless social emotional bare minimums are are met mm -hmm. and i think that's something that's like that you as a as a person create a safe space for a child how many other professions get to do that yeah. every day? So I, I have a story from like this, literally this past week. Um, and this is one of those moments that like just kind of like renews your hope in teaching and like renews like all the good feelings you've ever had about your job. And um, so I, I have a student this year who just like moved from a, a different town, like about 10 minutes down the street. And um, they 
they have an older brother who is really into playing the saxophone. Mm -hmm. And the um, he's in like seventh grade. The PE teacher was talking to him and was like asking what he liked to do. He told him he liked to play saxophone. He said, oh, so you, you know, you're in band. He goes, mm -hmm. no. And the PE teacher goes, well, well, what do you do then? He's like, I'm in choir. Like, well, if you love to play the saxophone, why are you in choir? Why aren't you in band? And he said, well, we didn't have the money to buy a saxophone, mm -hmm. so I can't be in band. So, like, thank God that PE teacher decided to, like, go around and ask everybody if they had any connections they had. Like, he went around and asked if anyone had a connection to somebody who, like, could get a saxophone, right. owned one that was used, right. and could sell it to us mm -hmm. or something. And they're he, expensive. They're they are very expensive. expensive. He found a used one at a local music store and the, the guy was going to sell it to us for $800. And so like he went around and asked for donations and like I was able to help out and yeah. that made me feel really good. At, and like we presented it to him and uh, he brought the kid down from class and it was just like me, him, our counselor and my principal were standing in the room and um, he goes hey, you know how like you, you're supposed to go to, to choir next period? And we were talking about how you like to play the saxophone. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, well, next period, you're not going to go to choir anymore. You're going to be going to band from now on. And he opened up the case and the kid just started crying. He was sobbing. And we were like, are you happy? Like, do you you're, like right. it? And he's like, he's like, yes, I just like, no one's ever done anything like that for me before. And like, it's those little moments right. those that moments. I love more than anything. Like, I, I don't care, you know, if all my kids did really, really great on a test or like, I like, yeah, sure, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But like, it's those little moments where like, you're like, I just made a difference in that kid's life. Yeah. And he's going to remember this forever. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, you really get a taste of like, what impact you can make on As somebody. As a teacher, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with, I, I think like, one thing I was always hard about in my class is like, not testing specifically but like growth yeah. like showing growth yeah. even academically yeah and like my thing like my favorite thing about being a teacher this is my number one thing is when you have a student who is struggling in class mm -hmm. and then they finally get it yep. yes they the like I have, I have cried i remember yeah like i'll cry right now um we're not allowed to cry right you guys can't. No, I, just, okay. I, I don't. I can't stop. Once Tears, I are allowed. Tears are allowed. Tears are allowed. I just can't. I, sure I, just I don't think stop. there's like you know. <laughs> I, I had a here. stuffy nose earlier, so I'm like, uh, I can use toilet paper on the ground. Yeah. For, yeah. For oh my gosh. <laughs> but I had this little girl in kindergarten, and um, she every single like or her growth test, every growth test, she would just bomb it, like just not. She would always, like, it was just, like, low. And I'm, like, oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? And it wasn't until the very last one. And I, like, sat with her. And I was, like, I need you to just, everything I've taught you. what Everything. You think about it. You take as much time as you need. Yeah. Like, I will be here. If you see everyone finishing first, that's fine. Right. Let them finish. Right. You take your time. You do your best. And show me everything you learned this year. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that girl went from way below, like knowing no she came in knowing nothing, yeah. and she left at almost first grade. Yeah, like That's amazing. Complete. And I, I remember when, because her score popped up automatically. Yeah. And I literally hugged her, and I just cried, and I was like, "You did it! We you did learned. it! Like we did! <laughs> we and I was did like, it, Joe!" Like my. <laughs> That's been our motto for this season. We, we did, did it, it Joe. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, all that hard work, I was going to retain her. And I, yeah. I know it's so hard in kindergarten to be retained. Like, even parents are like, you Why? guys do that. Why? Like, you know, like <laughs> right. sometimes you need yeah. it. Yeah. But she was going to be retained. And no, she she showed it. And I was like, you did it. You don't, Girl, you don't have to worry about you it. You go. go to first right. grade. You go to first grade. Right. Because a lot of it is a lot. Of, and it's like, like you said, kindergarten and, and, and pre-K, a lot of it isn't. Because when you teach pre-K, um, the expectation, it depends on what kind of program you are, but most pre-K expectations is that they know everything from middle of kindergarten. The, the, the thought is they're going to lose yeah. a semester's worth or whatever. Mm -hmm. So our things, was, they had to take a KRT assessment and they had to show where they were at and we'd give it to the kindergarten teachers. And they'd be like, yeah, they're at the end of kindergarten now, which was always a good feeling. But I would say nine times out of 10, the, the child that was falling behind or the child that wasn't able to grasp it, it was so, always for social and emotional reasons. So you sitting down with her and saying, take your time, mm -hmm. tell me what you've learned, mm -hmm. gives her the autonomy to be like, I can do this, right? Because yep, she's yeah. not going to overnight 
know that information. Yes. She knew it. So it's like it's that's it's so frustrating. All these test scores and stuff like that. It's like how often do those kids? I did not. I don't think I ever passed a standardized test up until maybe high school because mm-hmm. I, I I obviously passed the GQ G, GQE GQ whatever it's called in Indiana. I graduated like uh, you know what is it summa cum laude and wow, and and, yeah. and in college then and I've never got anything less than an A. But you would have known that then because I had the anxiety and I, and I didn't feel like I had the and then I had professors like take your time yeah do this you know and I'm like okay I do I do know it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's great to be but able it's to important give them that. you're that person, you know, yes. and I love being that for the kids. It's like you're a professional hype man. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Literally. Like we've that had so much like, I mean, I had a hype button. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Jay had a button that whenever my kids did anything, I'm like, go press that hype button. Yeah. And they would dur, 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 like they would <laughs> go crazy. And it's you're you're building that relationship with them like that is my i will i don't care about anything right. if i don't have a relationship with a student yeah like they're not gonna they're not gonna succeed it's not gonna yeah. happen and that's why i'm a teacher that's why because yes. i need to be yeah. in there and i need to do it because i know that there's people right. that aren't doing it yeah that, that that will be the hardest part about when i leave education i i, I thought that education i know mm-hmm. people, i always t- i will talk about head start until the day i die because it's an amazing program when executed correctly yeah. and i um thought that teaching was head start and i thought that and what i mean by that is the events that you do with the families the we talked you know you do home visits with the families that you know you you if if you do parenting classes with the families you sign them up for any um like public service that they might need mm-hmm. I thought that's what teaching, that was my only impression of teaching, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I thought this is what maybe, maybe my teachers when fourth, fifth, sixth grade were doing it. And it's just, I wasn't the student that needed it at that time. Mm-hmm. After fourth, before fourth grade, I was one of those students that needed it. I was a, I was a, you know, a Head Start child. Um, and then I came to the Philly area and it wasn't that. It was looser lesson plans or what you have to teach. And it was more felt like childcare. And I thought, I need to go back to school for social work because I, I'm realizing that what I was doing was social work with, with children and families. And I loved the holisticness of that. And mm-hmm. I can't find anywhere else other than Head Start. And I want to be able to do that there. And so yeah. that's going to, it's going to, it's, I'm going to be able to make a difference in families, but it's going to be hard not being in a classroom yeah. every day right. with 20 kids. Yeah. Being able to, to, to feed off that energy and to be, it, you are a professional hype, hype person as hype as, person. as a teacher because like listen i've never had to wave my hands do backflips more than to entertain a group oh of you gosh. know 22 five-year-olds i'll be like we're no, having fun right yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we're having a blast. like i gotta yeah. put my teacher hat on and yeah. i gotta go do the splits yes and whatever you want me to do like i'm yeah. gonna do it but yeah no that and that's that's i agree when like if or when the day comes that i am no longer a teacher that's why i can't let go yeah. of it Cause I'm like, yeah. I need to be here with these kids. Right. Like I want to, and then the thing is like, I teach a, a title one school. So uh, yeah. low, yeah. like yes. m- so do I. almost everyone, yeah. you know, is low income in my school. And, and also they're Hispanic. Yeah. Majority is Hispanic. So I'm like, I got to make the difference because I, these are, these kids are battling both sides, yeah. Yeah. you know, and everything is telling them that they can't, I got to be the one that tells them they can, because who's going to do it. And yeah. th- you just need someone. Everybody yeah. just needs that one person yes. to believe in them. And uh, go on. Couldn't agree know? more. Well, <laughs> I would love to hear more about like what yeah. the rest of you guys are thinking about your favorite things about being a teacher or about the classroom or what you love about your job. Um, with all the negative that's going on right now, I think we could all use with some more some positive. Positive. Yeah. positive. So um, hit us up in the comments and make sure that you go and check out all of our new merch. We're all, we're all repping the merch today. It's I know, cute. I got a shirt. I know. <laughs> so make sure you go check out the new merch. It is out and it is cute. So grab yourself some merch, rep it at your school. Tell them all about our podcast. Yeah. We love you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.